What's up guys, Kwezi here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make abstract text renders in Cinema 4D. I'm going to be using Cinema 4D R17, but you guys can use any Cinema 4D, uh, really like R12 on up. I don't know if anyone even has anything below R12. <coughs> oh man, excuse me. But there's nothing you need to download for this tutorial. Um, there's no materials or anything like that. However, if this video gets 100 likes, I will put the Cinema 4D file for what I have right here in the description. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. And we're gonna go to MoGraph, MoText. We're gonna align this middle. And I'm just gonna call this t oops, tutorial. And I'm gonna make the depth about 150. Somewhere in like the 140 to 160 range is what I've been doing. Um, <clears throat> and the font I am going to be use is, I believe it's called Coolvetica. It should be after the end. There it is. Coolvetica. Um, I'm gonna bring this down so it's in the middle of my page like so. I'm gonna to go to caps, fill it cap for the start and the end, and I'm going to set that to three uh, centimeter radius. And I'm going to Command C, Command V, and drag one of those down below and uncheck it just to have it um, in case anything goes wrong. You always want to have a backup text. Um, so we're going to take this main text here, um, and we're going to add white to it first of all. This is going to be our white text, and. We're gonna go ahead and go to MoGraph Effector Random. You can see the letters go all crazy and stuff. And what I like to do is just set these each to five centimeters in the position um, and then adjust them later. And we'll check mark the rotation. Make sure you're on the parameter uh, tab. And we're just gonna bump up this maybe 10, um, maybe this one to like three or six works, not too much on that one. And a little bit on this one, we'll go like seven. Um, you don't wanna go more than 15 for any of these or it's like a little too crazy. Um, and we're gonna go back to the position and we're gonna bump up the X. So as you can see, some things overlap, which is what you want, you want kind of an overlapping look. And as you'll notice, some things like the T and the L are a little far off. So what I'm going to do is go to the text layer and just hit C on the keyboard and open these two folders and drag out the folder that has the name of your text and then delete the other uh, two folders or nulls, whatever you want to call them. Um, and let's open this up and let's, let's move in some of these letters. So I'm going to bring in the T a little bit and I'm gonna bring in this L. All right, and then I'm gonna take the TUT, I'm gonna hold shift, click the T, click the other T, and just bring these in a little closer to the O. Excuse me, something like that. And, oh shoot, we lost our white material, I accidentally deleted that, so I'm just gonna drag that back on. Um, and then I'm gonna Command C, Command V, that whole null, or, or folder, whatever, um, and we're gonna add the other color, which is a green. And I, I didn't mention this, but these are literally just um, basic colors. So all I did was essentially go create new material, double clicked on it, and um, I changed obviously the look. So I right clicked on the little ball and changed it to object soft shadow. And then just changed the color, or brought up the saturation and then changed the color. And that's really all it takes. Um, so you just want a white one and one of color. And we're going to go in here and we're going to move some forward, make some a little bigger, stuff like that. Just get a little bit of a uh, variable in like size and shape and colors throughout each letter. So the first one, I'm going to keep it white and I'm going to drag back the green part of the T, just back a little bit. And I'm going to go to the scaling tool and scale it up a bit and go to the rotation. Uh, rotation tool and just rotate it something like that just so it's like it just creates a nice little effect there um, we don't want anything to be like look um, placed everything kind of wants to look just a little random um, if you know what I mean 
Um, so let's go ahead to the U and the U we're gonna we're gonna bring this out a little bit so the green shows through. And what I'm gonna do actually is let's go to object tab on the U. And you can see right here um, in the movement, uh, it says 151 centimeters. That is the depth. That's what we said originally when we made the text. I'm just going to decrease that. So it's something like that. So the green is in the front, white still in the back. And that's, that's all I'm going to do for that one. Let's go to the second T. And we're going to keep it white again. So we're going to do a similar thing, bring the T back. And we're just going to bring it over and let's maybe put a rotation on this. And now you guys don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can do uh, like variations of things, uh, but sort of this is just the general idea of what you want to do. So I'm going to bring out the O a little bit and actually I'm going to I have a camera set up in my Lightroom and I'm going to just click out of that so I can get a little side view and bring out this um, O. And again, I'm going to decrease the depth, not quite as far, maybe like halfway like that. And boom. And now we want to get a little more random because we've been going white, green, white, green. Let's, let's keep this R green. Um, so we're going to leave it out in front there. But we are going to offset it just a bit. And let's move it forward like that. All right, let's go to the eye. And since the, the eye is really out of the way, you can't really see it. Um, so I'm going to bring it up and over. So it just kind of adds a little, little nice effect there. And let's do the A. We're going to also keep this white. And I'm just going to rotate it bit to the side like that. And then finally, the L will keep it green. And actually, let's decrease the size of it a little bit something like that that's a that's pretty cool <clears throat> so now you just want to play with your text get it how you like any color combos you could add more colors um, you could add more layers one thing that I like to do is to take these both of these um, text layers command C command V to duplicate them select the move tool and just bring them back and then flip flop the colors and that's just kind of, it adds a little more depth. Um, you don't pick up a lot of it in the final render. Um, you can actually move it back a little further if you want. Uh, but it's just something I like to do to add more depth and more color variety, I guess. Um, but now let's get into some of the random effects going on around everything. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is going to go to the objects and I'm going to get a platonic and I'm going to go ahead go to MoGraph and get a cloner. We're going to put the platonic in the cloner and actually let's decrease the size of the platonic to maybe 25 so about a quarter of what it is now and let's go ahead to the cloner and let's go to the mode and put grid array and let's go to the size um, at the X or I guess this is the Y and bring it out so it goes the full length of our text and let's play around maybe bring that up a little bit and increase the depth something like that and we can increase the count um, you can increase the count by however many you want uh, that's maybe a little too much uh, we'll keep it 433 um, That'll do. And now let's make sure we have the cloner select selected. And let's go to MoGraph, Effector, Random. And let's play with the position. So I'm just going to bump this up. Let's bump that up. And let's bump this way up. Uh, now this will give us different depths and just like a cool overall look. Um, and we want to check rotation and just bring, do whatever to this. You just can be as random as you want since... Um, it's not really going to change much. It just makes it so not all of them are facing the same way, which it would be boring if they were. And let's check scale. And you can play with scale. I did on mine. And you get some cool, like, crystal-looking effects with this, in a sense. Um, and we're going to add a green texture onto this. So, oh, I put it on the random. You want to put it on the cloner. And I don't know, I always just get like a sense like these are jewels or some kind of valuable rock, like this green kind of look uh, when you like scale it into a thinner version. 
And I think that's pretty cool. It looks all right. It's all right if some of them are in front of the text. That just kind of adds to the randomness of them, I suppose. Um, and I'm actually going to increase some of these a little more so I get a little thin one. So there's a thin one. There's a thin one. That's that's looking nice. Maybe I'll even expand that a little. Uh, decrease one of these. Ooh. And yeah, as you can see, I'm just playing around with things. You can play around with stuff as much as you want. So moving on to the next thing, we're going to play with some of the stuff in the background of the text. So if you look at the original one I have, um, I'll drag it on right quick. Um, I have these lines in the background, which I'll show you at the very end. But what I'm concerned about is these kind of abstract shapes in the background, which give a really cool effect. These back lines are they're kind of iffy if you want to use them or not. I put them in there because I thought it'd be cool, but I, I'm kind of second guessing myself with that. Um, but so in the background of these, essentially all you need to do is get another platonic. Um, and so let's get that. And if you select the platonic and you go to type, there's a bunch of different types and you can select whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to do this Icosa, I think that's what it says. Um, and if you go to the deformers, go to displacer, put the displacer in the platonic. Um, make sure you have your displacer checked. Uh, go to the shading tab, click the little arrow, and go to noise. And then if you go to the object and increase the intensity, you can just get some different looking abstract shapes. So I'm going to go like negative, uh, like a lot right there. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and scale this down a bit. Um, maybe play with this a little more. There we go. That's something that I want. So it's just kind of, it kind of looks like two pyramids put together in a sense. Um, and I'm going to get out of my camera and move these to the back. And let's go back in the camera. And we're going to have one in like the top left. Something like that. And we're going to Command C, Command V, and we're going to bring one down. And we can rotate this however we want. So maybe like something like that, that works. Let's duplicate another one. And in mine, I put one like in the center of the O. So is there like a point? Um, let me get out of the camera again. I'm going to have to move this forward so it kind of is see. Yeah, there we go. Stick out through the O. That's a pretty cool look. Yeah, I like that. And I'm going to duplicate the original two on the left side. Bring them over to the right. And just rotate them. Bring this one a little further over. And this one, let's bring it up, rotate it. There we go. And then you can play with the colors here. Um, there's no specific color order. You just don't want to have too much of one color in one area. So let's see if the green, uh, yeah, the green will work there. Um, I think the white won it. Uh, let's see, green work there. Sure. I don't know, we'll put green on all of them and then just put white on the ones that would look better. So this bottom one, I think I'm going to change to white. And then, which one is this? That's not the one I wanted. Um, that one, and then which one's in the middle there? That, that one. All right. There we go. So now we got these abstract kind of effects in behind the text. And I'm going to just minimize all these. And then what I'm going to do is select them all. Copy C, copy V, or Command C, Command V, my bad. Um, and we're going to get an atom array. And actually, let me Command Z. Uh, right click and group objects. Put them all in a group. And then go to atom array and select the group. And we're just going to rotate everything so it's the opposite. So go on the rotation, hold shift, and rotate about 180 degrees. And we're going to put this in an atom array. Um, so I like to set the sphere radius to 2. 
and the cylinder radius to one. And then I use green. And now let's just check this out because this is essentially the final, um, this is like what it's gonna really officially look like in a sense. You can see uh, the abstract effect down here. Uh, probably would wanna change it. It looks a little gray too. I'd clean that up in Photoshop. Um, one thing I did do in the original was select all the text and I rotated it up ever so slightly like that. Um, and actually, let me play with this abstract. Just move it back like that. All right, so if you guys think that's good enough for you, you can qu quit out of the video, whatever, drop a like. But if you wanna do the line things in the background, which are really simple, all you need to do, um, get out of the camera, go ahead to your splines, get a circle. You wanna put it XZ and increase the radius so it's essentially just going around the text and going off screen like that. And I'm gonna command uh, C, command V, and put one at the top here. Command C, command V, put one at the bottom here. And I forgot to do one thing, and that's move them all forward. So let's get back out of the camera and move them forward. And I'm gonna actually have to increase them even more because the camera is still in the way. But there we go. Back to the camera. And essentially, all you need to do is get another circle spline and then go here and get a sweep nerbs. Add the circle you just put in there in the sweep nerbs. Um, and let's. I meant to click the circle. Let's decrease the circle radius to about five. And let's duplicate the sweep nerbs twice. So we have a total of three. And you just add the circle splines to the bottom of the sweep nerbs. And there you go, you kind of get um, a little effect going in the back of the text. And I like to, oops, I want that in the middle one. That, don't want you, that. And we can, of course, play around with these. Um, so maybe I want that one a little higher, this one a little lower. And that's basically it if you want those lines. But thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know what you guys would want to see next time. If you guys want me to go into a Photoshop part here, um, show you how to do stuff with this render in Photoshop, I gladly will. Um, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content. Uh, add my Snapchat, which is Quezzy, for any updates, exclusive stuff all that jazz. Check out my store below for everything I use, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.